Hey guys, it's Dima from Demostech and today we are going to talk about the boot loop of the Nexus 6P and a few other devices. Ok, so my phone isn't currently in boot loop mode, as you can see it's already starting, it's already booting up, but it was. Now it's sort of fixed and I'm going to tell you how to fix it and what can you do and what's the problem or at least what I suppose the problem is and what actually happened. So first of all, as you can see, uh, my device acts pretty normally, give me a second just to unlock it. Now obviously uh, it does need some time to boot uh, up, but you know it works pretty fine as you can see everything seems to be fine. But what I'm going to do now is go to CPU-Z and show you something interesting, which will actually tell you what happened and what is the issue almost. Well as you can see this is the CPU-Z and uh, if you look closely at the SOC you'll see that uh, I have Snapdragon 810, 1.56 gigs, uh, 8 cores and then you can see something very interesting uh, CPU 0, CPU 1, CPU 2, CPU 3 are working normally but CPU 4, 5, 6 and 7 are totally stopped. So what is actually going on here? What's the issue? So first of all many people with Nexus 6P and with many other devices such as Nexus 5X and others experienced uh, lately or not exactly lately it happened even before but nobody actually connected the dots for some reason and I think that uh, that's the missing point here but I'm not sure again I'm not an expert or anything but it seems to me pretty obvious that the issue isn't in Huawei it's not on the Android software it's not related to anything like it the reason is actually in the Snapdragon 808 and 810. So the Nexus 6P has 810 as you can see here, the 5X has 808 and what's going on is that for some reason after some time and no it's not specifically with Android Nougat because I survived Nougat without any issues, everything was perfect. It actually happened to me a few weeks ago, about two weeks ago while I was already on Oreo for, I don't know, for a few months I think since I was in the beta and everything worked perfectly so it's not related to Android and I saw that issue happening on other devices that don't even have Nougat so it doesn't relate to Android version or anything like that as far as I understand. Now what happens for those devices that actually has the boot loop issue? Now before I tell you what happens uh, please note that not every boot loop is the same so uh, it doesn't mean that if you have a boot loop it's this issue, it can be something else. So uh, in my case the boot loop happens on the Google logo that you saw earlier when I started the video. It doesn't happen uh, when those you know dots of Google are going with those many colors etc. If you have a boot loop while that happens it means it's probably a software issue and it means you probably can refresh your Android and everything should be good. But that's not the case for me and for many others. In our case the boot loop happens during the Google logo, in my case you saw here an uh, unlocked lock which states that my bootloader is unlocked which is made me actually very lucky. So what I suspect is that the issue lies in the middle of the Snapdragon 808 and 810 with the big little architecture processor. So the issue basically that the big cores, those are damaged. Something happens there. I don't know why, I don't know what happens, I'm not really sure, I have a few speculations but you know just theories, nothing else. Now uh, please note that 808 and 810 are very powerful chipsets that were used in many devices. A few of them is the Huawei Nexus 6P, the LG Nexus 5X, OnePlus 2, HTC One M9, LG V10, LG G4 and etc. Now uh, I did state LG G4. If you remember, in the past, LG uh, had many issues that their devices were sort of stuck in the boot. They didn't boot, they, I don't know, were crashing or something like that. I didn't see personally that issue, I didn't seek too much into that, but I'm pretty sure it's the same one. Now, uh, those people that had LG G4, LG basically replaced their devices and everything was seeming to be fine. Now uh, they basically said that something was, wasn't soldered good enough 
uh, on the socket or something and that's why it was causing that issue. Uh, LG stated that they fixed this issue and the same one happened with uh, LG V10 and a few other LG devices back then but uh, it really looked that it isn't that common such as LG V10 and LG G4 which are obviously more common devices as well. Now uh, LG didn't state anything about what was the fix exactly except that they just fix it. Now uh, in my opinion they didn't exactly fix it because uh, later it was found out that many newer LG G4 devices were having the same issue again after a longer period of time. So basically LG patched it somehow that it prevents happening or something. I don't know. I really don't want to go f that far because I'm not an expert and I'm not really sure what happened there. I don't have any, you know, any clue from LG itself or any official statement or anything. So basically, from what I understand, on those sockets on the chipset of Qualcomm 808 and 810, you have a big little system, which basically means that you have two processors. Uh, the little processors that are uh, sort of the normal work, so while you use your phone in daily regular tasks, is operated by those little cores. So this is the normal one. There are other cores, the other CPU, which is the big CPU sort of, that comes into life only while you are working on hard stuff, you are multitasking or you are using games or something like that. That's when the bigger cores come to life sort of. Now obviously they are all on always sort of. I mean, uh, they are not used maybe, but they are on. Now what's going on is you have the A53, the Cortex-A53, which is the little ones, and the A57, which are the big ones. So the A57, for some reason, while that issue happens, can't load in the kernel. So the kernel cannot lock on that CPU for some reason. I'm not really sure why, and I'll tell you in a moment how do I know that, but uh, that's what's happening for many people. That's the issue. Now, more of that, the A53, maybe it's uh, less powerful, but it is very efficient in power, so basically it consumes much less power. Now, let me tell you about this fix, what's going on and how you can apply it. So, uh, it sadly, or thankfully maybe, happened, uh, the same boot loop happened to uh, someone from XDA forums, he's a developer or something like that, uh, he's not an expert in kernels as far as he states in his, in his posts, but uh, his nickname, uh, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, but it's XCNathan32, something like that. I'll leave all the details in the description of this video, so you can find him and his post and how to fix the issue yourself. Now basically what he did um, is grabbed uh, his computer, connected the, the phone to it and started taking out all the logs from the uh, device. And then he saw actually that for some reason, uh, the phone, the kernel cannot lock on those bigger cores, so it, I don't know, it's supposed to lock in, I don't know, a few milliseconds or something, or a few seconds, so it wasn't locking for some reason. He did uh, go and check how to do that, he checked a few other things, and he could actually um, make the kernel lock after a longer period of time, he thought that maybe something happens and it takes longer for the cores to be locked, but for some reason, it doesn't help. Now it doesn't matter how long that uh, the lock will wait, it still won't help as, as far as he states. So what he did instead is basically uh, sort of rewrote the kernel, basically he did a modified kernel that um, doesn't give a crap about the A57, it loads the A53 and leaves the A57 stopped, it doesn't load them at all, it doesn't use them. Uh, I think it actually loads them or something but uh, it doesn't work with them, I mean it making them stop or something and that's uh, how this kernel works. So basically in that state, if you actually load with his kernel, sorry for that, my phone uh, is, you know, it's a little bit sick, no, I'm just kidding, uh, it's just a notification. So uh, the phone basically, as you can see, turns on pretty well, it works pretty well, everything is working. So uh, the only thing as you can see that the four cores of the higher, of the bigger, CPU are stopped. That's the only difference. Now he did the same kernel for the Nexus 5X, so 5X and 6P, 
can be fixed with uh, this custom made kernel. Uh, it works with Android Oreo as well. So he basically uh, got some help and got it working on Android Oreo as well, at least till this point. Uh, it works for me pretty well. I don't see any difference, anything, seriously. Uh, I was supposed to see uh, much less performance on the device. I expected it to be very slow. I expected it to barely work even or sort of. Uh, but for some reason, I don't see even almost any slowness. I mean, I do feel it slower from time to time, but I believe it's because I have many files and I have many applications on it, something like that. I don't believe it's because of the kernel. Uh, what I do notice is that the power drain, so the battery, uh, is consumed less. So the battery keeps on going and going much more, which is actually good. So uh, it reminds me of the days that I was using the Nexus 1 with fruit, with custom kernels, with custom ROMs, with some, I don't remember the app name, but you could change the governors of the CPU, uh, which uh, basically allowed you to run the CPU on slower or higher. Uh, clocks, I think, can use it, I don't know, in different ways or something, I don't really remember, but it consumed less battery. So that was pretty much the same technique, I think, like here, but, but here basically you do that from the kernel, from a custom-made kernel. Now, if I'll receive now a new update on that device, I won't be able to actually update. Well, basically I will, but the moment I will update, if there's a new kernel in that update, my phone will be in boot loop again. Now, I'm not really sure that Nexus 5X receives the same thing, but basically if you purchased your device from uh, Google or from Huawei directly, you should be able to get an RMA, basically you send your device to Google after they do some diagnostics with you over the phone or over the chat, I'm not really sure, and you send it back and you receive a new Pixel device. So basically uh, you have a new replacement, you have a newer device, but you do need to ship your device back. I'm not really sure what are the requirements for that RMA. I cannot get it since I bought this device from a local store and the warranty obviously is ended. I have this device all, almost for about two years. So my warranty isn't going to work on that. Now, one thing in mind that I want to tell you, in order to do this fix, you need to have an unlocked bootloader. If you have a locked bootloader, you can unlock it. You don't need uh, to go into your ROM in order to unlock it but you were supposed to enable the OEM unlock option in your debugging uh, options on your ROM. So if you didn't do that, you are sort of screwed a little. There's still a chance. Now, first of all, in that state, if your bootloader is locked, you pretty much can, I would say, forget about all the data in your device, unless you go to a specific company that can grab your data from the chip itself or something like that, or if you'll be really lucky. Now, what happens, a few people stated that if they go to that area between the fingerprint and the camera somewhere here and they hit this up or freeze it, the device can boot. Now, it's temporary, it won't fix the damage, permanently, but it fixes it temporarily. Now, if you do that, uh, you are on your own. I cannot guarantee anything. Uh, basically, what people did, they used a hairdryer for about, I don't know, two minutes, even more, to heat that place up. Uh, some just took uh, ice or something, froze with the phone. Again, uh, the phone isn't waterproof, so I don't know, use some bag or something like that, if you are trying this method. I wouldn't recommend any of those methods, seriously. Uh, as an electrician in the past, it's not good for your phone, no matter what, even if it succeeds. Anyway, if your bootloader can be unlocked, again, uh, you will have to format the device. While you are unlocking the bootloader, your device will be formatted automatically, so all the data will be erased. Sorry, you pretty much have no way to actually grab your data from your device. You might be able to do something from the recovery, I'm not really sure. Uh, but that's the way it is. Now, uh, another thing, uh, if your bootloader is actually unlocked, it's very easy. You pretty much grab the custom kernel by from XDA forums. Uh, you basically need to have fastboot uh, and ADB drivers and commands in your uh, Windows or Linux or Mac or whatever you are using. Uh, you connect your device, uh, your device should be recognized, and you enter a sort of 
uh, I think it was fastboot flash boot and the file that you downloaded, uh, hit enter, fastboot reboot or just reboot the device from the device and that's it, it loads normally with only four cores. Uh, if you want to use TWRP recovery, for some reason the normal one doesn't work as well, which works on eight cores obviously or something, uh, so we did manage to make a version for only four cores and that one works uh, flawlessly. Uh, so you will need to use that one instead in the future if you are doing something, I don't know, with ROMs or anything or you're flashing anything custom. Now, many people report that this fix, this custom kernel, uh, makes their devices work very slow. It doesn't happen to me for some reason, I don't know why, I have no idea. I'm a... Uh, I'm not a gamer, I don't play games almost at all, but I do some multitasking and many things on my phone and everything works flawlessly. So maybe it's more specific to games, but uh, for those that it doesn't work well, there's another sort of patch that someone made, you can flash it with uh, a custom cover like TWRP and then basically uh, you are good to go, uh, it improves the performance, not really sure how, not really sure what it does, but people say it's good. Now the same fix, uh, as I said earlier, exists to the Nexus 5X as well, but it wasn't tested too well and as far as I've heard it's not that stable. So people, if you currently own any of uh, the following devices, Huawei Nexus 6P, LG Nexus 5X, OnePlus 2, HTC One M9, LG V10 or LG G4, go ahead and back up your device and if it's possible unlock your bootloader or make it as easier as possible when you can't access your Android ROM to actually flash another kernel or flash another ROM. Now uh, if you actually flash in a stock uh, ROM again and again it won't fix this issue as well just if I didn't state it earlier. Sadly uh, this issue wasn't stated officially anywhere uh, only LG G4 was stated to have uh, a failure in its hardware and was replaced. The, ne the Nexus 6P, the Nexus 6P also now has an RMA option uh, with Google if you actually purchased your own device from Google. But any others, like uh, all the other devices that I stated, I did see many posts on the internet that have boot loops. They have some issues with their uh, hardware, but no one officially stated anything. Seriously, the issue seems to be lying in the Snapdragon 808 and 810 by Qualcomm and not because of any device manufacturer or Google Android. So again, I'm not an expert. Uh, I'll give in the description of this video all the links where you can find the fixes, how you can do that. Uh, I don't mind trying to help you in the comments or maybe do a video on how to do that, although I don't want to mess with my device, but I'll have to. Uh, if you actually live in my area, if you are in the center of Israel or something like that uh, and you have um, that device, I don't mind trying to assist you. Uh, I can't promise anything, but if you want I can try to assist you uh, for free, I don't take any money for that. Share this video, it's good enough for me. But uh, I can't guarantee anything, I'm not an expert, I just know how to use Android, how to flash canals, how to flash ROMs how to unlock bootloaders, I know how to work with uh, Android devices like Nexuses specifically and few others, uh, so I might be able to help but nothing else. Seriously, don't expect me to, I don't know, magically fix or back up your device, but I don't mind help helping people around. Now sadly, uh, if I wasn't sure before if I'll upgrade my device to something newer or not, currently I'm pretty eager to upgrade my device. Now currently I would go with the LG V30, I really like the device, I really like what it has to offer, but I'm really really expecting the new Pixel 2, the new Pixel XL 2 more specifically, and I hope it will be a good enough device for me and I'll grab that one as, as fast as possible, because I'm kinda skeptic that the Nexus 6P will be around for much longer with me. So that's pretty much it for this video, you know what to do, like this video if you liked it, dislike if you didn't, although you shouldn't. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, and when you do, don't forget to ring that little bell to receive future video updates. And as always, see you in the next one!